Good evening and welcome to On The Spot. My name is Patrick Amara. Close to 2,300 NRM aspirants are out in the field seeking the mandate of the party members to represent them in parliament as district chairperson and city mayors. With voting slated for Friday next week, scenes of chaos, voter bribery and intimidation are evident in many parts of the country. Already, voices of dissent are loud from some of the contestants in the just-concluded SEC election. So can the party secretariat and the electoral commission organize a free, credible and fair election? Tonight we host the party secretary general, Justin Kasule Lumumba. Madam Secretary General, thank you so much for having honored our invitation. And I should say to you that the spotlight of Uganda is on you right now. You are on the spot and welcome. Thank you. Good evening, viewers. You are the Secretary General of the NRM party. No question about that. But I'm are you one. in charge? What do you mean by being Who in charge? Who is in charge? What do you mean by being in charge? This is what I mean. I've seen the chairman of the electoral commission of your party, mm. Dr. Tango Doy, saying that in some places there's not going to be an election because of, of, of the confusion that happened. And I'm thinking, you are the secretary general of the party, you are the custodian of the constitution of the party. But the orders are coming from somewhere else. And so I'm wondering, is Justin Kasule Lumumba in charge? First of all, I want to take this opportunity to congratulate the NRM family the Ugandans, for the national conference that we successfully held as a party, the first of its kind, where people took decisions in, their, in, their, in the areas where they were, at the district headquarters, which is unprecedented. I want to thank the National Chairman of NRM, His Excellency Yuri Kagutam Seven. I want to thank members of SEC, members of NEC, I want to thank members of the national conference. I want to thank the candidates who offered themselves to, to, uh, uh, to, 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 to lead the party. And I want to congratulate those who won. But in especially, I want to thank Ugandans and congratulate them, because this was the first of its kind. When we started, nobody knew how it would flow. But we kept trying out this. But in especially, I want to thank the media because they were able to help us get the message so clear to the people and also show that in this country, the technology is on, it can be used. And I want to take this opportunity to encourage media, encourage also the, the, the other political parties and individuals to take advantage of the media. But what I also want to say, it is still so costly. If you as media would also, I think we should also talk to UCC. I know you have the element of business and whatnot, but make it affordable so that uh, people, many people use it and then we shall bring in economies of scale, if I remember my economics of, of HSC high school. So I want to, to, in a special way, to thank you, media. You, you, you simplified our work. I want to, before I go to your question, this kind of national conference we had, there were advantages. Yes, the other and people would come to Nambole, network, People come to know each other. People come to, 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 to also leave their areas and come to the city, Kampala, to see the, 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 their biggest city in Uganda. But you would have challenges of crowds. Uh, sometimes uh, you find one who says, I, I want this, you cannot provide, I want this. You, you find uh, sometimes you may not have adequate attention, especially to the elderly and the people with disability. And uh, we would have some complaints, but this time the numbers were few, decentralized, and uh, the, 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 the district leadership, the chairpersons of NRM of the districts, the, 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 the administrative secretaries, and the, 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 the registrars, took care of these people and the complaints were not so many. And, uh, but what I liked most was that uh, 
like last conference of January, 25th, Janu 25th of January 2020 this year, when we left as Secretary General, we ha I received the reports and even was able to check on, on nine people in hospitals here in Kampala. And one of uh, our, our delegates, the, 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 the elder from Kabong, Mama Francis lost a life. And we had to, to, to treat her, and, she, and uh, we had to, to make sure she's given decent send off. But also, the very people, the, men, the, uh, the other eight still had, uh, you'd find people had injuries and they were hospitalized. But thank God this time we didn't have. So you're saying so the kind of conference that, that you held has saved you the bother of logistical challenges, having crowds come. I must say, what I've I saw... I've not talked about logistical challenges mm -hmm. yet. I've talked about lives. Yeah, but and I'm coming also to that. Mm -hmm. Because we would, the members would leave their districts to come and stay here in Kampala. So the party would foot the Bureau of Transport, the, the Bureau of Feeding them for the days they are here, but also the Bureau of of, uh, of uh, accommodation, the bill of, uh, let me say, welfare, and it would be more expensive. This time, we had to cut the cost down by 30 percent. But of course, the media brought in the, uh, the took the to also brought in a component which has not always been there. But uh, let me say, in all, we, it cut down. It cut down on the on the. On the on the on the financial logistical requirements so th these are lessons we have to take and now from uh, the point of a person who was the chief organizer the administrator with the team to make sure things happen it's also good that i can share with the community i can share w this experience with the, my colleagues from other political parties so that uh, they can come to me as a, uh, I'm also now building eh, into becoming a consultant. Isn't that good? More of a consultant in politics. Uh, they are not that, sure. That is not, that is not, uh, especially on, uh, on issues to do with the, in a conference where people are far away, but they have to take a decision. So I want to also take this opportunity once again to congratulate those who are able to win and uh, those who didn't win. Take heart, it's one person at a time. There's one seat. So out of the, 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 the 27 candidates who ended up on the ballot paper, there were only nine slots for you. So that means one person has to sit at a, on the chair or in the seat at a time. So you, back to the issue you asked me about uh, orders by Dr. Tango Doi. Dr. Tango Doi is the chairman of the, the uh, Electoral Commission of NRM. With the Honorable, deputized by Honorable Jen, John Chijaj Arimpa and Commissioner Jane Alisemera Babiha. In the constitution of NRM, we have the NRM Secretariat. But the NRM Secretariat, headed by the Secretary General, with the different departments. And part of the departments, there is uh, the Electoral Commission of NRM, there is the Finance Commission. But when it comes to the Electoral Commission, where they, they, they are doing work on behalf of NRM. And the body corporate is NRM. The N uh, electoral commission is not a body corporate. It cannot be sued or, 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 or sue. It has to be NRM. But when they are doing their work, even as secretary general, I don't have the power to say, vote Sandiso. Don't vote Sandiso. No. They have the, 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 they have independence, but which independence has to be looked at in the interest of the party, but also has to be looked at in the interest of not giving fair play to everybody. So, so you're, that saying we they don't have, use you're saying the chairman of the electoral wait, commission wait. has the powers to stop an election I'm where he thinks uh, uh, something maybe is no, not going to fair. I'm going to, I'm going to without explain. you making that I'm, call. No, I'm going to explain. Okay. So as they do their work, Certain things can happen, and they come and consult as Secretary General. Certain things they may not consult. Let me give an example. Fair play. If you have decided to take the law into your hands and inflict pain on an individual, 
It ceases even to be Dr. Tango Doi's issue. It is the law. It's the law. What Dr. Tango Doi is saying, please, you seem to be taking the law into your hands, inflicting pain on somebody. We cannot allow this. So he takes a decision and says, I'm, I'm not proceeding with elections in this area, and informs the Secretary General and gives the reason. So he doesn't have to run to Secretary General to come and consult when somebody is taking somebody's life. So it depends on the so on some of the So on some, some of these decisions, so you what have of been those consulted, and the decisions taken is the part of your decision. The issue of violence, the issue of violence, nobody can stomach that. So when Dr. Tango Doi takes a decision on where he has seen somebody taking the law into, into his hands or her hands to inflict pain on the other, threatening somebody's life to that level, he has to take a decision. He doesn't have to run to Secretary General, then you go back. Assuming he goes back when a life is what, gone. What is happening so in what your he party, did, Madam Secretary General? Wait, wait. Why are your people what he did? so violent now? It is the early days of the election for heaven's sake a primary. It's an in-house election process of the NRM party, I'll, and people are being you know, beaten to pulp. I want to request that you, when you ask, you just give me some time to explain and complete a sentence. Because when you, I don't complete a sentence, as a leader, I should complete a sentence. Because when I don't complete a sentence, it means I've denied some explanation to somebody. And remember, I use taxpayers' money even to come here. Because the government pays, gives money to political parties that have representatives in parliament. So it's not only to NRM members, but it's even all, to all Ugandans. The issue of, uh, I was explaining why Dr. Tango Doi can even take decisions without even consulting the national chairman, not only the secretary general. If it is life-threatening, surely, he doesn't have to, to come. And in this case, where he said we have to hold this, and so that the state does its work. The state should do its work. The issue of violence, I, 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 if you observe, out of the constituencies we have, the many constituencies we have, violence has not been the issue. What we have really grappled with and we are still grappling with as NRM is the issue of observing the SOPs for COVID. That is now our biggest challenge. So as we talk of violence as a, a, a life threatening, there is COVID, which is also life threatening. So violence, yes, we have seen it happening in some cases, but in relation to observing SOPs, that's where we are. We, we, we are doing so well in most of the areas. But in those areas where we are not doing so well, it has taken us a lot of effort to even drive there and tear off the candidate and say, so this is the warning we are giving you. Should you continue, we are going to disqualify you. We've gone to that level. So violence is not good. And I'm somebody who hates violence. From even when people are seated, like if we are near and we are conversing, like people who talk and uh, keep slapping each other, I don't want even that little pain of showing me that you are so happy with what I'm talking about. No. So I, would, uh, I want to take this opportunity. As Secretary General of NRM, please, if you inflict pain on the other, the law will take course. Because we are not going to, to accept this. Because we have the most vulnerable people as participants in this exercise. The people with disabilities, the, 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 the elderly, the women. These are people who must be protected. Of course, we, everybody must be protected. But this must get either double or triple protection because of the, 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 what they are. And they didn't call for it. So, but, but do you so realize, we don't uh, honorable, support... Honorable Justin Lumumba, do you realize that what happened in Hoima, you being the party in power, if you depict that kind of violence, it points to a future where you are headed, especially when you're going to compete with other uh, power centers. If you can do that in-house, within yourselves, that scares us. But haven't you people seen other people in other parties even beating each other? What has been even happening when people are in your studios? 
two wrongs don't so, make it right. So, I'm, I'm telling you that, yes, the violence has happened. But we have, out of the 136 districts, it has happened in two districts so far. You're even talking about one. There is even a second one. But what I'm saying is that we, 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 we condemn that. And that's why Dr. Tango Doit said, this must stop so that the law takes its course. That means we are very conscious. But we you, would have covered up, but, but not. But, but so you accept there's a stain on your party so, because of what has happened but in those two areas I, in our country. I want country, you in to just look at it. how many participants do we have. We have over, over 1,800 people who are participating as candidates for, 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 for parliamentary, in fact, as okay. candidates. Mm -hmm. We have a total of 2,300. So, now, if those people, out of the many, we've had two conflicting in Hoima, we have another two. But I'm not saying that is a smaller percentage because any pain is pain. But I'm saying you cannot judge like it is already 80%, no. And we had to arrest it at that point so that it doesn't happen. We okay. have to make sure we minimize it. And well, it's our responsibility. And we've even taken a step that we are now involving security, especially the police, to make sure it does not happen anywhere else. We are even in a discussion with the security to make sure that on the voting day, on the voting day, we, there is security provided on every village. Because remember, we are going to line up observing SOPs. So there is the issue of making sure there is no violence, but also observing SOPs. Let me, let me, let me refresh your mind. I, I know you organized uh, an, uh, the recent uh, election of the party top leaders, but one of the contestants, uh, the Honorable Sanjay, is telling us that the number of the votes garnered uh, for Cap Captain Mike Mukula and himself, they go beyond the number of actually what you had in the register. In other words, uh, Madam Secretary General, it appears that you had some kind of, according to Sanjay, some kind of ghost voters and what an expose. But, but maybe let me play it for you so that he makes a case. And uh, if my producer can, I just want that clip of the Honorable Sanjay Tana talking about the numbers and how the numbers are not adding up. What was coming in was not the real votes from the ground. I will give you an example. In Chitugum, where they said I got 11 votes. But the real sheet of Chitugum, I got 66 votes. Even the people there confirm. Everyone may be in a race if he or she has lost, may not concede. But I think this was, it was openly seen that the unfairness was at the highest order. And why do we have these variations in the tallies amounting to thousands of voters that all the voting took place at the same venue by the same delegates for the various candidates on the same day so why the huge variance in the population of the electoral college and the actual votes cast what an expose did you have some ghost voters when it came to the voting of the honorable sanjay tana and captain mike mokula I hire a ranking member of your party to say something like that. There's a problem in your house. We got, I got the petition from Honorable Sanjay Tana, and the legal team is looking at, he, at it. And after, after they've looked at it, they will advise and we shall interact with him. So I cannot discuss it here. Today I was in a meeting where there was Honorable Persis Namuganza. And I told her, I saw you complaining on TV. Why don't you bring your request, I mean your petition, so that we have a discussion? Because you may even be assuming when it wasn't. So because, and then she said she's going to give it to me tomorrow. I'm waiting for it. The beauty of it is that every polling station we had for the national conference, we had a video camera. We had a video camera, and we are going to look at that, examine all of that. So when one claims that a nanny voter came and voted, a nanny delegate, we shall be looking at the faces of those people, and we shall be identifying them. He's presenting the numbers. So He's presenting the numbers. Even when it comes to the numbers, 
he we are going to invite him to come and substantiate i read through his petition i don't want to go into the details of it so i have to let 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 me wait for the for that for that time I, we shall come and explain we are available and you are available. You give us the platform, we come and explain. So I, I don't want to go into the details of all that, but what I want you to appreciate is that, yes, we had an election. People are coming up to complain. And we are saying, if you, please complain, put it in black and white so that there is a discussion. Because you may be assuming when it's not so. And we may think it is not so when it is so. With the politics, it's about talking and finding solutions. And by the way, when we are in school, what is mobilization? Mobilization is identifying a challenge with somebody or a challenge of a part in, with a particular community and offering solution. So that is part of mobilization. And the, the, the participation of members in this election has actually given more life to the party. Okay, moving forward, are we likely to see you as the party change the rules in the voting system? And I'm saying this because, look, you have a man who lost majority votes in eastern Uganda. The loser in eastern Uganda is going to represent the people of eastern Uganda. You know but, what I mean? The, it is part of his petition that I may just make one or two sentences about it. The people who are members of the executive committee of the party, according to our constitution, they are elected under different under titles, say like vice chairperson in charge of Karamoja. But the one of Karamoja has to be voted on by all of the delegates from all parts of the country, giving it a national character, national outlook, because the decisions they take affect the whole country. So I, I, I don't want to go into details yeah, but of that, does, but, but does that I'll, make I'll sense for you answer. that uh, somebody, for example, we're talking about Karamoja, the you are, about you are representing Karamoja, you lose from Karamoja region, you gain in other parts of Uganda, mm -hmm. but yet you're supposed to represent Karamoja. It's about numbers. The winner takes it all. So the man who lost in the, a vote from the East so even will represent the people of Eastern Uganda. That will depend on the other. Uh, that's, the, the, that's, that will depend on other ingredients in that petition. So that is, is mo, one so, of them. So yes, but moving forward, but do you the see constitution sense in the, the argument the that if you have lost it's not about votes, see, it's not about seeing sense in it. It's about the constitution of NRM. Yeah, but you so have if a, you are the you, vice chairperson of who? But amending it, constitution is really a speciality of NRM. Can't you amend that part of the constitution? Have we seen the need to amend that? So you don't. You see may it. have seen it. We have not seen it. It's your own member who's shedding a light into the constitution. But he has not proposed the, that you come and amend this. Because it's after this, you know, like people would come and take a vote in Nambole and go back. But this time, because they had to move the whole country to campaign, some have started saying that instead of moving in the whole country, let Karamoja vote the vice chairperson for Karamoja, let uh, Kampala vote the vice chairperson for Kampala, instead of uh, a person moving, uh, putting his request or his candidature to the whole country. Because it, it, some are saying it's too costly, it's so stressful, it's so hectic. But this is an experience that we, people have been able to get through this. Before everybody would come to Nambole, people would not feed it. I've already heard so some people... So it's experience ex that he, some of those views may come up. But it's not that he, because it has happened to this one that he, we should know. It has to be a process, consultation, and the process w which must be followed is also clearly stated in the constitution of NRM. I've already heard some people in Eastern Uganda said we are not going to work with so and so because we did not elect him. So you have a situation on your hands as a Secretary General. You are taking me into the details of the petition. I don't want to go into that, but I've told you that. I haven't. I haven't to looked the at the petition. I'm only telling you what I have heard. Yeah. I've said what is in your petition. But, I've told but if it is in the petition as well, then that even makes a point, or that these things have to come out. 
Yeah, but according to the constitution of NRM, it is not that. And the current constitution is not that. But you know, it's going to be a tough time for Captain Mike Mukula because the people he's going to represent did not vote for him. Even though he wins because the constitution says so. You know when you say it's going to be a tough time for him to do what? When he sits in, in, the, in SEC and we are discussing policy. We are discussing a policy matter and a decision is taken. It is implemented either by the secretary general and the team or the party structures or implemented by government. Yeah, but he's the, he's the representative on the highest command of the party representing the people of Eastern Uganda. Let's go and uh, look at but the, by the way, and the merits of uh, the My question, uh, Madam Secretary General, mm. is just hinged on whether you think it is okay moving forward to change the voting process in that aspect. And I'm not saying he has not won fair and squarely. I'm only saying, do you see a point of changing the voting process? Even if I see that we should change or not, I should, uh, my responsibility as Secretary General is to first put the proposal to the SEC. When the SEC takes a decision, then makes a recommendation, which I a report that I take to NEC. At the end of the day, it is not supposed to be my decision. I'm supposed to give advice to my bosses, and it is them to take a decision, not me. And this is another issue that has come up, that with all respect, information that you and the government chief whip the Honorable Ruth Nankabira, were behind the Honorable Passes Namuganza's candidature against Speaker Rebecca Kadaga. And it came out like the two of you fighting a leader with national character. First of all, I get disheartened when I, came, when I come to a national TV like this and you bring in a discussion of an individuals. That does not build institutions. I want you to take note as media. But secondly, the for me, as a Secretary General of NRM, Kasule Justin Lumumba, I'm holding an office of the party for everybody. I'm holding an office of which is supposed to facilitate, to be at the center of making sure work or activities in the party, policies in the party, constitution of the party, all goes on well. So for somebody to make an allegation that the Secretary General was favoring certain certain individual uh, a certain individual or individuals somebody should be able to substantiate it's not about talking about it and you leave it to that somebody may have told you because he has personal interest or because of this or the other as kasule justin rumumba i was the one who even held the meetings with the staff at the secretariat and he told them if you don't know we all come from districts where voters are for these particular offices. But the offices in which we are are offices of the party, are offices of the party. Had my hand been in this vote, I want to look at me. <laughs> Had my hand been in this vote as Kasule Rumumba, because I know the whole country, every, it is here. Every district is here. I have staff who are called administrative secretary. I have leaders of political parties from the national level up to the village level. I have their telephone numbers. I have their names. So I never talked to anybody. I sent, never sent a message to anybody because this is an office of the party. Those allegations, if anybody has evidence, let them come and tell me. Or produce it even to my bosses because I have an appointing authority in this office. So, but had I hand, uh, had a hand in this, no, no. A politician to be in an office for five years. And no, if I had had a hand, you actually one would have even traced it. And I'm one person whose personality I don't hide. If it is, it is. And uh, at one point, I'm one person who was advocating for dialogue. Before things went to, 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 to go to, I was advocating for dialogue because my role as Secretary General is to keep the party more united. My role as Secretary General, every, anyway, every Secretary General is to look at what numbers did I find in this party as I was assuming leadership in this, in this party. Mm -hmm. So how many have I added on? 
Have I maintained? Has the number reduced? Have I added? Because politics is about numbers. And the beauty of it is that the vote is equal. The weight of a vote is equal. Whether whatever you own or what you don't own, whatever height or color, whatever side of part of the country you come from. But most importantly for me as Secretary General of NRM, including my team, including my team. Because when you look at all of us, where we come from, if those allegations were so, it wouldn't have been. Because even those they are alleging maybe supported this or the other, the vote maybe was even the person who won in that particular place. So those are allegations, okay. and which will not even divert me from my work, from my role. I'm a, I'm, I'm a, a fairly composed person, and I'm not easy to derail. So if those are meant to, to divert me, no, I'm on course. My eyes are on the ball, NRM to win, presidential, parliamentary, local government. That's what is my role is now. Honorable Justin Kasule Lumumba, hold on to your points because we're going to take a break. And when we come back, let's look into some of those episodes where contenders or aspirants in the NRM party have been doing whatever they can in total disregard of the COVID guidelines. We'll be right back. It's the leading party in this country. The people who have uh, given us the, the, the regulations, the, the SOPs, uh, leaders in the government and leaders in the party. So it's the responsibility of the NRM party, the members, the leaders of NRM, the members of NRM, to be at the forefront, to make sure we observe the SOPs. So when it happened, I remember very well in Koboko, I called on police to arrest whoever goes against, because we are not above the law. And I remember the, the, the spokesperson of police said they don't have powers to arrest a minister. I said, no, the minister is not above the law. And when you have mentioned there are some, it's not only Anite, there's also many others you have mentioned there. And the police has, has, has summoned these people. So I'm waiting to see what the state is doing about them. Because as, as you know very well, for us as a party, we don't have the powers to arrest somebody. We don't have the powers. The Constitution does not give us the powers. It's the responsibility of the state to arrest anybody who goes up against the law. But as a party, it is our responsibility to re keep reminding people, not only for the good of politics, but because of life. There is no reverse in life. When a life is gone, it's gone. And even if one is a minister, one is a candidate, it's not, it's not uh, that he's uh, guarded against COVID. He has to do it himself or herself. And as the numbers sour, we also have to increase our vigilance. We have to increase our vigilance. So it is, uh, it is not something that I want to, you are saying as Secretary General, I'm not going to go policing people in Karamoja, policing people in, in Chisoro, policing people in, in, in Butugogo. No. My work is to re keep reminding them using you as my but, medium but, but, but you see so i have when, to when continue have doing that party, but even when i of the see party, like i've just been seeing uh, on social media uh, an image that is going viral of, of the honorable uh, rukutana you know moving in a, in a procession in a, a big crowd and and people dancing that really not only defying what the minister of health has said but also defying the orders of your party but i've told you that I, I, I called on police to arrest whoever goes against the law, whoever does not observe the SOPs, because we, we, we as a party came out clear. Even the message of the Secretary General that went to, to, to the national conference, the last four pages were a message that I requested the Minister of, of, of Health to, to, to spell out in the simplest language possible so that this message goes to the leaders in, in all of the districts about COVID. So 
Oh, that is a sign that what, we what are, what we explain, are very... What explains that, 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 that when the NRM... That is a sign that we are very, very... What explains that when the NRM political leaders, you know, defy some of these rules, uh, the police is reluctant? If there's any other person, the police is swift and hard on them. You know, when it comes to fair play, really, with the, people will say, look at them. You, they, I, can let the, the, they can let the NRM, you know... When I said, move on freely, but you never allow FDC or, or people power anybody do the same. In fact, you'll be the police would be so hard on them and will be so swift. When I sent the message of the Secretary General to the National Conference, I included the message of, of uh, from the Minister of Health about COVID because I knew. We needed it to get to the, to the leaders to that level in black and white. Yes, government had done it, but I also wanted it to, to appear in our NRM message as a party. Not only government, but also as a party. What you are talking of, when we, I saw what happened on the, on the, the big convoy in Mbarara, uh, from Mbarara to Shema, I'm the one who got a phone call and called the Minister of Security and said this is a, a security issue that should be handled. And they stopped the convoy along the way. And the, the police who had even allowed them to have the convoy and said we had allowed only a hundred vehicles was brought to order by the very institution to which, which he serves. When, he, when he, I saw what happened in Koboko, I even had to hold a press conference and say, police, where are you? Arrest the people who are supposed to, 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 to who have given, who have let this happen. And if, if the police officer, those in charge of keeping law and order, are not doing their work, they should be arrested. Those were statements from me as a secretary general. But as I said, I don't have the powers to arrest people. It is the state. So I was calling on the state to arrest these people. I don't have the powers even to arrest you here. I may carry a big title as secretary general, but I can't arrest you now. I'm a law-abiding Ugandan. You wouldn't <laughs> arrest me. So, but, <laughs> but now, how about in areas in Ibuhuizu, again in Western Uganda, images of the NRM aspirants, you know, giving out money on camera, you know, 2,000 shillings per 1,500 per individual. And you, they make people lying. And, and, and really, it, the picture looks pathetic. It is, it's bad. Because you, you, it again depicts that people are so poor, have been pushed to the war. And they're just looking at this man who is coming, running for an NRM ticket, and they're handing over 1,000 shilling note to the people in the village. Really? If a complaint is raised and there is evidence, somebody will be disqualified. Because when you, say, you saw somebody giving out money, until I've seen it and seen that there is this candidate, Lumumba, giving out money. But if somebody comes and tells me like you are telling me, and you've not showed me that the candidate is Lumumba here giving out money, and giving out money on this particular time of elections, how would I prove? Until, until somebody has brought the evidence to us. I also want you to look at, you, you are looking at it that side, but assuming you were on this side organizing those elections, how somebody is innocent until you prove the guilty, bring the evidence. But you know, some of your colleagues have put a price on the Ugandan voters. They can just go with the money and dish it out and they expect to get a vote. I know there is commercialization of politics in this country, which is unfortunate, and it's growing, and it has grown more. But it's our responsibility, me and you, don't push it to me alone. We are supposed to work together because it eats up the moral fiber of a, a country. It eats up the moral fiber of the leaders. In some cases, you find when a leader is voted, assuming I've ever been told of a leader who had been voted and had the, 
spent some good amount of money. Whenever they would tell him, we want Uganda remind the, 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 the district to work on this road. Remind the center they promised to tarmac this road. He said, but for me, I bought my vote. So I want to call on members of the community. The moment you allowed somebody to, 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 to pay your valuable vote in terms of money, you are also demeaning yourself, you are demeaning your vote. So, which is not good for us. And if that leader tells you tomorrow that I bought my way to this place, how will you respond to such a leader? So, members of the community, let's really look at what will this person be able to, to, to help us to help you in that particular community by not providing as a person, but making sure the central government delivers, but also the local governments deliver. So the issue of, of taking those bribes also is also a bit of demeaning your vote, demeaning you as a person, because you, your, your vote is not worthy what you, 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 that person is giving you. Because if the leader does not, does not, pro, does not p make sure government provides, say in terms of health, health care, you may lose a life. And there is no amount of money attached to the value of a life. That's just what, moving on. There has always been this kind of issue especially from the civil society, but also from the other political party leaders who think that your party, the NRM, is so fused with the state that the individual Ugandans even find it hard to distinguish from the NRM of the political party and the state itself. And that sometimes you, have to, you should work hard to disentangle yourself from the state infrastructure. Even, I'm sure if you look into the petition of the Honorable Sanjay Tana, you may likely to find him making a complaint that s public officials were working on behalf of his opponent, m naming maybe RDCs and DISOs and things like this. How do no, you that is not part of his petition. Well, but that has it is been, not in his that petition. Has been part of an I read it three times to understand it very But well. you are aware that you have been accused of riding on state infrastructure to do party work. How, how, what do you need to do to actually remove that kind of doubt? One, I remember, you remember very well when he, the team led by His Excellency Yuri Kaguta Seven took power in, in the 1986. They came and put up the movement system, left political parties in abeyance. When Ugandans decided to go for the multi-party dispensation in 2005, July, the, the, the NRM party was fused with the state. But the NRM party took a decision in 2014 to separate the two. So in, in, in 2015, we were made to leave our offices in the government to go and take up responsibility in the party. So that was the time the two were separated. And we even went to the extent of bringing back the political parties and organization act where government should facilitate political parties that have membership in the parliament, that have using numerical strength. So we separated the two. That's why I don't drive a vehicle with a red number. I drive a vehicle with the number of the party. When it comes to issues of facilitating the party, even money for the party is also appropriated by parliament. So we separated the two. And even in our constitution of NRM, for you to be a member of the secretariat, a staff at the secretariat, you should not hold another office in government. And that's why I'm not in the parliament. But if there is a place I would have loved to be and enjoyed to be was parliament. Because I had been there for 15 years. And I had another term to get from the people of Bujiri. But the party had separated the two. So I could not be a member of parliament, 
and at the same time be a secretary general. At the same time, Honorable Richard Todwong could not be a member of parliament for no year and be a deputy secretary general. The same to Honorable Rose Namayanje. She could not be the woman MP of Nakaseke, at the same time be the national treasurer. The same to Dr. Omona. He could not be the, the deputy national treasurer of NRM and be a member of parliament for Kabera Maido County. So the two were separated. That's why when I come here to talk, I don't come to talk for police. I don't come to talk for, 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 for UPDF. I don't come to talk for... So we separated, but because we spent time from 1986 to 2000 and 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 six 2006 under the movement system individual merit the two were one and the same because it, the the, so the movement you, system the movement so secretariat fact that the you can movement have secretariat was part of the departments of government and people who are, are staff at in the movement secretariat talk of Honorable Matia Kasaija, talk of, of Honorable Dr. Chiyonga, talk of, of Dr. Chiza Besije, they were part of, they were on the payroll of government, which is not the case with us. So we separated the two. But also what I want you to know is that that remained in the minds of people. But also having been, uh, political parties having been in abeyance, the individual merit was also entrenched in people's minds. As so we talk even today, we still have the hangover of individual merit. Actually, we all, all political parties are struggling to, to, to build the political parties, but fighting the individual merit attitude. And it is not only... In the, in the members, but also in the leaders of the party. So it, it, it cannot be something that can, so it, can disappear that, in one day. So, so you're telling but us it now takes, that it will take time. That institutions of government are still in that mode. They cannot differentiate that NRM is a political party they think is part of the state because, look, when you have the other opponents, when they want to appear for a talk show on a radio station somewhere in rural Uganda, police will not even allow them to speak or do anything. If it is you and the NRM, they'll just give them a, a, a green light to do whatever they want. So are you telling us public institutions are still stuck in that mentality of thinking NRM and the state are one and the same? That's your own opinion. But that's what is happening but on the ground. Uh, but for me, uh, as uh, Secretary General of NRM, what I know is that, first of all, I'm a law-abiding citizen. Whenever we have functions, whenever we have activities, I follow the law. Public Order Management Act, I write to the responsible and inform them and make sure I attach all the relevant documents that I do. Even when we are going to, but first, most of the media in this country are owned by private sector. I'm saying this because I've so, seen uh, RDCs uh, so and police denying access to radio stations you as where political leaders are only going to speak on radio. You and yet they don't do that the same to NRM cadres. And I'm thinking, are public institutions still in the mode you talked about of failing to separate? political party NRM and state institutions and they think you're one and the same you remember very well that during the petition the presidential petition of 2016 by Honorable Amama Mbabazi part of it was the use of government owned media and the government went ahead to even bring the law where if it is time for campaigns, the Electoral Commission must have uh, some control of the use of the government-owned media houses. All of, the, all of that is meant to, 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 to make fair play for the presidential candidates, mostly then also if there is room for also those for parliamentary and the local government. Now, when you say police is doing that, I cannot know why police is doing that. It's the responsibility of police to be accountable to the public for their actions. But what I want to, what I always but call senior, on, what senior, I always call on are the, the people, what I always call on for the people is the, you know, 
Kamala, before somebody has completed explaining what you have asked, you ask something more to leave the other and leave it hanging. I'm a teacher by profession. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm taught to, to explain to what I think at least is sufficient enough. When it comes to those people, I would really think the police should come out and explain their actions. But as I keep saying that, but sometimes some of the politicians don't want to follow the law. Some follow the law. And uh, if somebody has followed the law, should we come out using the media and so and show us what he has been able to do, but the, the state or police has failed him to, to, to have this, yet he followed the law. But you never, you as media, ask them, did you follow the law? Did you do it? Because even some of them, when they, are, they go for these media houses, what language do they use? Are they inciting violence? Because still the state has the, the, the responsibility to make sure nobody incites violence to cause, to, to cause uh, insecurity or to cause harm to another person. You also never look at that side. Because for me, I would really think when it happens, analyze the situation, put the blame or the, the plus to whoever has been able, from your own analysis in what has happened. But what happens, you rush very fast to blame one side and you don't look at the other. Because we know the media so, houses would not allow them to incite violence and use that platform to abuse. Are you aware of the sentence I'm going to say next? Can you tell me, can you be able to detect what sentence I'm going to say next? I'm responding to what you have already said. But you, you don't know what I will say next? So I'm responding that's to why you always that, put a rider a that the views of the, the people who have come here are views of the individuals, not the media house. Why do you put a rider? It's because that means it may not be the, the, better la the best language or the, the best message that has been given during that discussion. But all in all, police should come and explain their actions. When it happens, they should explain. Because that's also part of the accountability they give to the public for the responsibility they, 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 are, they, they hold okay. in, this, in, in this country. Honorable Justin Kasule Lumumba, we are going to take a break. And when we come back, I'll be opening the line so that you two can be a part of this discussion. You're going to see the numbers on your screen. You pick your phone and call us. And please make it precise and concise so that we can have as many calls as possible. And should you be in disagreement with Honorable Justin Kasule Lumumba... Or even please, with you. Even with me. you. Why me alone? <laughs> or me. Please let us disagree with respect. We'll be right back. He's, uh, telling me that, look, he won Teso 100%. That's what uh, Captain Mukula has sent me. Sebei, you say 100%. Palisa, you say 100%. Um, and you have uh, gone ahead to give me a breakdown of other districts of Butembo, Kabarole, Chegewe, including my own. And in Kenya, where you got 90%. Uh, that's what you say. And, uh, well, some of the things we'll be looking into uh, because your opponent, who, by the way, I, I remember he also congratulated you, has uh, put a petition to the NRM Secretariat, so they will be looking into this. But uh, it's good to know that you got 100% in Teso, Sebe, and Palisa. Thank you, Captain George Mike Mukula. Let me get some calls here. Hello. Because, yes, hello. I have a call online. Hello. Hello. Yes, good evening, ma'am. What's your name and where are you calling from? My name is Sarah Kajingo. Sarah Kajingo, you're on Kampala. air. All right, go right ahead, Sarah. Yeah, thank you, Patrick, for. My name is Sarah Kajingo. Oh, it's a, go right ahead, yeah. Yes, uh, I would like to congratulate the NRM Secretary General mm -hmm. on uh, on uh, conducting um, a technologically advanced election. The rest of us who are digital citizens, we are very happy that at last this is possible in our country it cuts it cuts costs it cuts it cut it cuts time um, okay um so i thought you were going to continue uh, building on that but at least you have made a point that the nrm had uh, um, okay. um, yes. uh, i thought you were going to continue we have another call online hello Hello? Yes, good evening. 
Okay, um, you're having an issue. I, I don't know, I'm not going to stop saying this, and I've been saying it for quite many years now, that if you make that call, please turn down the volume of your screen. So when you turn down, it won't send an echo. Because when it sends an echo to you, it will confuse you. Turn down the, the volume of your TV set, then we shall have a healthy conversation. If you don't do that, we will not. You'll be having Hello. reverberation. I have a call on line. Hello. Kale Sevo, my Luganda is not very good. It's still work in progress, but my, I think mine they can. Is good. Yeah, yours is good, but I'm supposed to moderate. Uh, <laughs> however, <laughs> I think they can hear. All right, go right ahead. Mukama wange njaga la soka kuweba za seku itale jeno Okubera nga atese za bolo unji kubanga Okubera nga mchisera cheche njini Okubera nga atukoze bolo unji nyomo NRM Na etu mbade mkubiri za yongere mbo ongezi mani Na femitia aneno Tu ina mbaka wafeba mwita kamienwe makumbi Tumu tubera nga tumu yamba ko Okubera nga HV na cha fechi gita mbule bulu unji nyo Kule moku esi vila nyo mchivuge yo Nafe mchare no Tugere nga tutambuza bulu unji Thank you so much our caller and Mitiana, uh, and you are congratulating uh, the Secretary General for doing the job so well, but he also put in your, uh, your advert for your person in Mitiana. Uh, but thank you so much for your contribution, and, and Mitiana, to know that Mitiana is watching. I have a call online. Hello. Hello, no, come back. G good evening. Oh my God, I know my, my, my language is Rutoro, but if I start allowing everybody to use their language, I may not be able to handle this. So please, if you can, speak in English, the better. But then, I'll have no authority to stop somebody to speak in Akaramajong, in Ateso, in Alur, in Lukonjo, in any other language. And I'm not able to speak all those languages. So if you can speak in English, the better. For me, I will pick the, the Yes, subject. but when we start that, <laughs> we shall not be able... We are a, a Ugandan country with so many languages. A rich. Yes, but I am not able to speak all of them. And yet, if I stop one, if I start one and stop the other, I will be unfair. What do I do? Let's listen right. to this one who is on. Okay. Then we... The, the Secretary General has ruled. You can go right no, ahead. No, I'm not a request. I don't have the powers <laughs> to rule. <laughs> okay. Hello? We have another call online. Hello. Yeah, this is Sarah Kajingo. That said, mm -hmm. I, I would like to ask the Secretary General mm -hmm. if um, Honorable Chiwanda is pulling out of the race today, the Michiana North MP race was indeed to, to in furtherance of uh, separation of, of the Secretariat of the NRM from, from the state. Then two... Um, there has been ongoing accusations against NRM party bureaucrats. They are not new, the accusation that they involve themselves in interference, um, in supporting certain candidates against others mm -hmm. during NRM, NRM primaries in Iala, in, uh, among MP, NRM elections, those accusations are not new. And there is therefore a growing tendency among formerly active NRM members who say that instead of subjecting ourselves to the headache that comes with interference by party bureaucrats in NRM primaries, mm -hmm. that they run as independents from the start on individual merit. The other thing is, um, where is the place of branding, uh, communication within the NRM? Because the total sum of the actions of all these people who campaign with all sorts of taglines affects the reputation of the party. Apart from saying, we want the numbers. What are our, the values that we espouse? My last question is, if an NRM member, because as you know, we are all in the movement system of governance, and we have, everybody has always run within the NRM, even without a party card. 
So for those members who wish to run as independents this time mm -hmm. during 2021 20, elections but have run as NRM members for other offices, mm -hmm. are they required to write to the Secretary General or they simply cross and declare their candidature as independents? Thank you. All right. Sarah Kagingo there. Um, I think uh, we have gotten quite a number of questions. So Sarah asked one uh, quite a number, and so I'll take just one more, and that will be it. Then the Secretary General will respond to your questions. I have a call online. Hello. Hello. Good evening. Good evening, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, what's your name, and where are you calling from? Okay. Looks like we have lost connection to that caller. Please. Um, you could respond to some of those issues. Honorable uh, Miss Sarah Kajingo, mm -hmm. I want to thank her for congratulating us for having held a successful national conference, which was preceded by national, uh, successful National Executive Council NEC, but also National Executive Committee SEC. But uh, as I said, media helped us to have it successful mm -hmm. so and she's also part of the media teams i also want to congratulate her and also thank her for what she was able to do the issue of uh, the the bureaucrats of the party campaigning for different people until one has come and said it i was on this very show mm -hmm. after the the elections of the primaries for the East African Legislative Assembly members. Oh. And the Honorable um, Madam Sarah Kajingo said, I was partisan, and I was the reason she had lost. I told her to substantiate, she failed. So up to today, she's holding into it. I know she contested with some of the people who had been staff in the office of the Secretary General. But having been staff in the office of the Secretary General, one of them is Honorable Matthias Kasamba, one of them is Honorable Jojo Dong, that doesn't mean that they didn't have the right to contest. We should separate the two. Yes, they had been staff of the office of the Secretary General, and they knew who the voters were, the members of parliament, and they had campaigned for them because they were part of the teams of the secretary general that would go out to do the administration work with the leadership of the parties in the different districts. So I remember that very well. And uh, I thought up to now I've given enough explanation. But from what she's saying, it seems she has held into it, which is also not good for her age. Meaning what? You know when you are that age, eh? you have too Which many... Age? Which age? Her age. Sarah is still young. She's in her... Uh, you know for women, so we don't it, mention why, why, age. So why are you focusing? But you you, you, you have to be so happy okay. and, okay, and move, move on. on. Mm. So, but uh, I, would, uh, I, would, uh, I want to say that no, 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 no bureaucrat is supposed to take side when it comes to an internal election in the party. And if it happens and somebody brings evidence, then action has to be taken. And it's so clear. That's why if one wants to contest, according to our constitution of NRM, you are supposed to resign and leave so that you don't abuse that office because of conflict of interest. Okay. So the issue of uh, which is talking of uh, People coming to contest as independents, I'll reserve my comments for now. I'll reserve my comments for now. We are in primaries. I don't want to begin discussing all of that as of now. Not because I'm not informed, but I don't want to comment about that now. So the issue of uh, branding, the party and whatnot, for us as NRM, we have our yellow color. We have the bus, we have our logo, which you have brought here. And by the way, quite a number of people in this country didn't know about the, 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 the NRM logo. People knew the bus only, but didn't know about the, 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 our, our, our sign of all clear.
our our book which is the constitution so all uh, the, the, the 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 constitution people only knew about the bus but we have our logo here the colors below here these are the rivers those those indicate natural resources and environment so we talk of peace unit transformation for prosperity because all of these feet and, the, and there's a gentleman who's taking you to court all of these feet in in our 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 principles of of patriotism actually we first we had the nationalism we now change to patriotism because when it comes to nationalism nationalism you love your country you love yourself but you don't mind what happens to the neighbor so if we took a decision that let's attack the neighbor under nationalism you will only protect the interests of your country you don't look the other side who who's who, who who is going to be affected most by your actions and is it an innocent soul or not so we took on patriotism because patriotism you 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 love yourself love your country but you also mind okay. the the effects of your actions the effect of your words to the to the neighbor and we have pan africanism pan africanism means that we want to come and work together as a block the east african federation the pan africanism so that we preserve the human the black race, but also most importantly, the African, but, 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 but also the, this, to this have logo, it as a block, to have it you, as a block, you know, this logo, so that an we are able to, to... There's an individual who is demanding so to that he, So that we are his, able to, 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 to go as a block to, to, to discuss whatever we are discussing with, with other blocks, especially the other continents. Then we have, we bring in, the, so as we go to discuss with the other blocks, what do we have? It means so Social economic transformation. Okay. So uh, you must have incomes at home, but also be able to be able to 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 trade with the neighbor, the, the, the other blocks. So you have one voice, but also be able to to go with the meaningful let's, discussion let's, let's, with the point, other one. Then we have point. democracy, where. People choose their own leaders. People are free to express themselves, provided you are not bringing up ideas that are, are that hurt the other. And also, people having the freedom to to to, to belong for what, to whatever political affiliation you, they you have. Made that, you made the that person you are talking about, the person who has taken us to court, they've taken us to court. So what I can't discuss it okay, here I, I, until, but uh, yeah, the, because the, you know, the moment you talk shall, about the logo, I know somebody is contesting that you have used his logo and so he needs money because that was his career the person has to show us the copyright all right yes so it the, must be registered so i know you're proud it's of it but law. somebody's saying it's it is his law. work and you haven't paid them <laughs> it's the law and the, uh, we, we shall we shall we shall be able to be do that the one from mitiana who called and said yes i um, i thank him he congratulated us but i also want to thank him he to, he that means he has been listening and was able to give us his his message in a, in a, his his local language his 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 mother tongue i want to thank him but he was he he, he also told us about his candidate you said he, you are going to give him a bill because he advertised his candidate but what i want to say that the person he talked about is the chairperson according to the constitution of nrm is the chairperson of nrm for that constituency Mithian. so that one should be the one who should who should even conduct meetings and make sure nrm remains strong all right so the issue of that we going to mitiana we this is digitalized elections it is the people in that particular area village based campaigns to campaign to talk to themselves, not we from Kampala to go to their villages, because we could even be carrying COVID to those okay. villages. Okay. Please talk to, 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 to people in Mitiana, talk to yourselves, talk to each other in the villages as you mobilize support for the NRM to win at all levels. All right, uh, thank you so much. What's going to be your parting shot, your concluding remark? I want to. Congratulate everybody for the national conference we have, we had. But also, I want to request and sound this to members of NRM, the candidates, the participants, the 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 the, the well wishers. As we campaign 
as you you you, you look for for mandate from the members of NRM remember covid is with us it's no longer news it is with us we at the secretariat we at the secretariat we first had two who post who tested positive we had a third one last week we had eight eight and myself so <laughs> uh, members it is no longer that we've heard about it we've seen it on tv it has happened with us at the secretariat so as you do that i want you to know that there is life even after the primaries we must have life even after the general elections you as a candidate you can get covid you as a candidate you you as a member of nrm you can get covid so please observe right. the sops <clears throat> okay observe the sops but i also want to call on the minister of health speed up the process of giving out masks because people in the villages those districts which have not yet received are waiting for the masks you have educated the people the importance of the mask the president came out and he promised ugandans to give masks the ugandans you have given thank you those who have not received are waiting give out masks so that we, we, we as we tell them to social distance they have the masks because even if we leave them to choose the masks for themselves i've seen some pictures where some people have put the leaves people have put banana leaves that means they have understood the issue of the mask but they don't have the mask so but since government, was supposed to give them government the mask, should provide the mask for that. as promised so i want to call on those there are those who feel they, are, they, 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 they feel symptoms but they assume they are not please if you do go to the health, uh, call on the district task force or go to the nearest government hospital explain so that they attend to you early okay you can only die if you go to the health center late but if you are, you go there early they are, you attended it too you save a life there is no there is no reverse when a life is gone and we would want to see that you are alive that in the beginning nobody knew about covid but now we have information about COVID. So please observe the SOPs so that you're not taken back to lockdown. Please. Because right. when you are taken back to lockdown, the challenges increase. Thank and you. which is not good. I want to th thank you for listening to us. But please, police, whoever does not observe the SOPs, arrest them. They're not above the law. Whether in yellow, whatever color, whether yellow or blue or, or what, please arrest them. For us as NRM, we want them alive. We want them alive. We don't want to see them dead. Thank you so much. Honorable Justin Kasule Lumumba, we thank you so much for your time. And all of you, we thank you for your great company. I think she ended on a very good note about taking COVID-19 very serious. This disease could have started somewhere in Wuhan, but now it's with us. And so the scientists have given us the guidelines on how we can prevent the disease by social distancing, though I don't like the word social distancing. It should be physical distancing in my view, <laughs> washing the hands and uh, putting on the mask like if you're traveling into, in a crowd and uh, doing all those things. We can maybe avoid the ex existential threat that is facing the human race as of now. So if we do that, I think Uganda, we can prevail. Good night and God bless Uganda.